Hey guys, um, my name is Barbara Beckman and I am a professional artist and I work from my studio almost every day and there is a company called Art Snacks that uh, you can purchase subscriptions for, kind of like a magazine but instead of getting a monthly magazine you get a monthly box and I'm not affiliated with them or anything. I started doing this a couple months ago um, I don't even know where I heard about it. I think it was somewhere on YouTube. Um, I tried it, got the first box, opened it, and loved it. And I loved it because as a professional artist, I'm hired to do commission work for so many people that I have a lot of deadlines and it gets stressful, especially this time of year um, with Christmas coming. Everybody wants things done. And I know that, you know, it's the end of October right now. And the next two months for me are going to be absolutely crazy. Um, I also sell at some art fairs locally, and I just I do a lot of commissioned work for um, for realtors. I paint a lot of house portraits for them, so they have closing deadlines that I have to have the portrait done by. So it's sometimes very stressful. And although I love what I do, and I'm I I'm blessed to be really doing what I do. I love art and I love creating, so I'm not complaining, but. There are times when I miss that um, part of me that's inside that just wants and needs to create something. And most of my friends that aren't artists, they can't figure it out. Like, why do you not want to go out and hang out with us tonight? Like, why do you... Girls' night out. Like, why do you want to go home and jaw? You jaw all the time. Um, but that's how I started. And I used to um, take anything I had laying around the house. I didn't grow up in a family that supplied me with paint. They just didn't have the money. So... I had to be very creative and I used to make things from like band-aids, that was my tape. Um, it forced me to use whatever was on hand to make something creative, even for school projects. Like, you know, my kids now are like, uh, I need a project, can you just run out to Michael's or Joanne's or AC Moore or somewhere and buy what I need? And I'm thinking, wow, somewhere along the line here, it has changed so much because I used to have to just wander around the house, use old broken garden hose or whatever I found, like the band-aids and electrical tape or whatever I had on hand. And I think it forced me to just be more creative and I enjoyed the process of taking junk and making it into something. So in my day-to-day -day life, um, although I do love what I do, I miss that, um, that time when I had to kind of use my my brain and figure out what can I make with whatever was at hand so for me this little box here is like a treasure and I love getting it every month I'm actually behind which just because I'm so busy I have two boxes to do so um, one was sent out to me at the end of August so this must be my September box so that's what I'm going to be working on today and I'm not going to do it in real time because it's probably going to take a while I'm going to try to enjoy this I'm taking the next two hours of my morning before I start my crazy day working to just remember why I started to do art in the first place to enjoy that thrill of whatever's in this box to just create something crazy or whatever is inside of me that wants to come out that's what's gonna come out and that's just grounds me and brings me back to um, to really appreciating being being able to work for my studio and just having a job that I love and it just it's all good so come along with me I'll open the box I'll film it for you and I'll we'll see what's inside and let's see what I come up with okay so um, before I start I want to show you my book because uh, I, I didn't start it that long ago so it's kinda cool to see from the beginning um, on the front cover what I started to do was inside the box they give you like a sticker of their logo so I've been putting the stickers how many how many kits I've gone through so uh, I just thought it'd be cool to decorate the front of this so it's a Canson uh, mixed media book 9 by 12 and it's not that expensive it's a great book for art journaling which is what basically this is and what I thought was kind of cool was um, I have to figure out what to do with these cards because it does tell me what materials I used um, and since there's only a couple that I've done, I still know which one goes to which. So I have to figure out how to attach it somehow so I know what I use if I go back for a reference. Or if people see my videos, they've been asking me, you know, what, what materials they are. Um, 
And although I try to show slowly on, on the screen, it's, I just really need to write it down, I guess. So in this one, what I did since the beginning of this book is very thick cardboard. I like to take um, flyers and stuff that I get in the mail that I like to recycle. And one of my older sons is um, looking to go to college. He's a senior right now. So we're getting a lot of these great pamphlets from schools that are thick and they have a lot of like... Um, they're almost like a magazine in itself. And I hate to throw them out because I can just gesso over the image and then paint on them. So what I did was I took one of the flyers that was pretty well made and I had glued it to the back of that cardboard, um, the back of the book, or the opening of the book. And then it folds out. I don't know if you can see that, but it does fold out like an accordion. And these are some of the other... Um, art snacks um, pages that I came up with so here's one in here too so I have a couple more to fill and I just thought it was interesting um, a nice little kind of pull out and I do have one this is from Valspar the, the uh, exterior paint samples that you get from you know your paint store um, I didn't feel like throwing it out <laughs> so I painted over it and although like some of these chips that they have that show different paints I'll uh, collage over it and stuff so you won't see the squares or if I want I can keep the squares it just depends what mode I'm in um, I just used some excess paint that I had when I was working on another project to just give it some coverage um, but at some point and I may do it today I'm not sure I will glue this to one of my pages um, like in here and I'll start another. You just have to be careful not to do too many because you don't want your book to be so big that you can't shut it. Uh, I learned that the hard way. So just pick and choose. You might want to like do a couple, stick one in the middle, stick one towards the end and then in the back so it's not so bulky you can't shut it. Um, but anyway, I do all my art snacks projects in one book. So, and I date them. So it just gives me something to go back and reflect on. And uh, I'm going to start now. So. I will speed up the video and I'll stop talking. I'll put some music to this so it won't be so boring. And uh, let's see what I come up with. Okay, so here are the two boxes that I have. Um, this one is September 30th, so that must be October's box. Hopefully I'll get to that in the month of October. So here we go. This is um, the August box that I received at the end of August, so it's September's box. So I'm going to open it with you for the first time and see what's in here. It's like a Christmas present every month. I love the way they like wrap it in this tissue paper. It's like another hidden treasure. So here's the card they send you. tells you what um, products are in here. Ooh, I got a great eraser. I can tell already just by feeling it. Erasers are so important so they don't mar your, you know, make marks on your paper or bring up, pull up your paper. So erasers are very important. They always give you a treat. Laffy Taffy, which is always a good thing. So let's see what's in here. And here's all. Oh, they changed the, uh, it doesn't say art snacks on it. It's just a little pencil now. See, it's already changed. Kind of cool. All right, so what is in here? It's great because there's other kits out there, but this is like affordable, I find. Um, that's why I use this one. Okay, it's some sort of Windsor and Newton pigment marker. Well, the packaging's pretty strong. All right, so introducing a truly remarkable new product, the Windsor Newton Pigment Marker and White Blender. So maybe these two go together. Pigment Marker, Pigment Marker, White Blender. And this says Magenta Red Shade. So there we go, it's on the, on the top. So this is the blender pen, I guess, 
and this is the pigment pen. Okay, so you're one of the first to get this product. It's not even available in stores yet. Known for their top-of-the-line paint materials, these pigment markers have the consistency and quality of paint, but in a marker pen body. The ink flows easily through both the chisel and fine tips and dries much slower for maximum ink movement. Along with the colored marker pen, Winsor & Newton has created the world's finest white blender. Just like painting, you can push around and mix the ink with the white blender, diffusing and expanding the color range. The ink of the blender also creates a beautiful stroke on black paper. Test your pigment markers on the marker paper included in your box. I guess that's this. Draw on this side. Okay. wonder if I have to shake it. So this is the chiseled end, and this is the point. Okay, let's play around with it. Well, right away I can tell it's pretty juicy. That's a good thing. Let me see how it blends now. So the same thing has both ends as well. So this is a blender. Oh, I see. It does. It does push it around. What I'm just doing now is just pulling that ink into the center. That's why I left the center with nothing in it. So that's kind of cool. So you can go right in and it does. It definitely moves this ink around. This is going to be pretty cool to work with. Um, I guess you clean it like any other blender. You just scribble it on the side. Yep, and it looks like it's taking the color right out. Yep, and it's pretty fairly clean. So to clean this, you just scribble on the paper on a clean piece. Um, it blended really, really nicely. Don't know what I'm going to make yet, but um, yeah, it was pretty good. Here's just the solid pen, and then here's where I faded it out. It's a little wet, but it looks like it's drying fairly quickly. Um, let's see come off on my hand. A little bit. Not too much. It's pretty dry. Wow, that's pretty cool. Okay. So, I have to figure out something with that. And pink's always a good color. So, let's see what this is. I didn't even see this. Okay. So, on to the next one. We have a Swiss wood pencil. It retails for $5.45. They also tell you how much things retail for. So the combined retail for these two are $15.98. So this is a wood pencil, and it's been around since 1915. Um, it's just a drawing tool with excellence and Swiss made. Okay, so it's HB graphite, perfectly finished with a soft matte body. Yeah, it feels good in my hands. It actually feels really good. Um, natural brown color okay so it actually tells you to sniff the pencil and you'll smell the earthy chocolatey aroma from the beechwood trees in the Swiss forest oh my gosh <laughs> this is when you really do need a smell a vision or smell a video it's actually the coolest smelling pen pencil wow pretty cool okay uh, and then the eraser Moo eraser by Weber I, like I said, this already feels good, I can tell. Um, it's a good one. This one says it's developed in Korea. It can be cleaned by using, by uh, um, rubbing off the sanded areas. Okay. This way you don't need to switch between several other clean erasers. Okay, that makes sense. So in, in a sense you're just cleaning it as well, like I just did with the blender pen on something else. Um, that's about it. What a great great one this month. This can be hard because there's only the pink, blend, pink, the blender, and a pencil and an eraser. And I try not to use other products that I have, but this might be so pink for me. I don't know. We'll see what I come up with. I'm not sure if I want to add in any products. I try not to just for the challenge. Um, so I'll probably try to stick with that. So let's give it a shot.
finished the uh, the little challenge, but I had to break my own rules, which I wasn't happy with. But anyway, I had to. Um, I usually just stick with what comes in the box, but I was finding some difficulty with some of the things. Um, the pens bled really nicely, the Windsor & Newton. Um, the pink was, you know, a little challenging. What am I going to do with pink? So I started out by making some flowers, some cherry blossoms. Um, I tried to use the charcoal pencil that came in it. Um, it's extremely soft. Um, it says 34B HB on it. And it's very, very soft. Like, you could blow on this and it would just scatter. So I actually took some water to it to my advantage and tried to incorporate that to make it look like some shading so it would mix in with the um, the blender pen. So it kind of all ran together, which was great. That's what I wanted. But then it was just so stark on the white paper that I decided to use some of my own stuff. So I did use some Spectrum New York um, watercolor markers. They're very juicy and that's what I was doing when I was adding some of the uh, background to it. Um, I used a lot of blues and purples just to create the background. I went back in with the, the pink pen that came in the kit and I mean that tip is totally totally ruined. I did not abuse it. I did not beat this thing up. Um, I don't know if you can even see it but it, it's ridiculous. Like I don't think I could even use this anymore. So it wasn't something that I did. It's just, I'm not sure. Um, I don't know if it's the quality of the brush. Maybe I got a defective one. I'm not sure. The white one I, I used in the same exact manner and it's actually perfect. It looks brand new. Um, so I don't know. That was interesting. Um, I ended up using some golden uh, fluid acrylics to add in some of the stems. And I used some gelatos, Faber-Castell gelatos, to uh, add some, some color to. Um, I ended up doing it on a brochure or some something. Oh, this was the paint chips. And I added it into the book here. So this, this one here, I'll start from the beginning. You open this book up. And I glued in a book previously, which I have some of my stuff in already. And it opens up really big. So it's kind of cool. So I still have this place to work. Um, this was a previous one that I've done. So what I did was today's, the September box, that I'm doing in October, I added here. And a good friend of mine passed away um, over the weekends. And he was an old gentleman that from, uh, from church that I knew that was just the sweetest man. Um, he made everybody smile and... He just was always happy. He, he was greeting everybody when you walked in. He greeted everybody, even if it was your first time there or your hundredth time, thousandth time. He was just a wonderful man. So uh, his name, well, we call him Bud. I'm sure he has another name. I don't really even know his first name. Um, but anyway, so I, that's why I thought of some cherry blossoms and some buds all over the place. And I wrote, one day I found someone who smiled at me and made flower buds bloom even in the saddest parts of me. Because when you saw this man, even if you were happy or sad, or he just made you smile. He, he was just so genuine and warm, and that's what my inspiration was today, um, just to remember him. And then on the bottom I wrote, rest in peace, uh, you know, my friend. So that's in this book, and um, this book also opens up. And that will have some smaller things that I will work on and put into it. I like having that different, uh, it's not the same old boring book that you open and flip through. Little surprises here and there. Um, so overall, you know, I wasn't really, really too happy with the kit. Um, I think that's all that came in it. I think I used everything. The eraser was good, as I thought it would be. Um, I don't think I would purchase the pens. The blender pen was okay, but... It wasn't something I'd run out and buy for sure. And the charcoal pen was great sketch pen, but it was too soft for what I like. And as I was moving, it's all, it's all over my hands. It was blowing off. Um, I used hairspray, an old trick from back when I was a kid when, of course, I had nothing to use. So hairspray, just a, a quick spray, and it just lets the charcoal uh, kind of sit where I need it to sit. Uh, and I blended it a little bit, but I didn't want it to be running all over the place or moving all over the place so, um, as I finished it up here. Um, I also used uh, 
some water to help push around some of the pigment to make it look like there's more of these cherry blossoms in the background. So that was a lot of fun, but uh, no, I think the only thing I would use from this actually is going to be this, this good eraser. Um, so it wasn't a waste and now it's time for my snack. And uh, if I have a minute, I will try to do the next box. See you next month. Thanks for watching.